Thank you, members of the media, for being here today. I am very pleased to inform you of the impending arrest in the murder of 60-year-old Harold Linton, Jr. An arrest warrant for aggravated murder has been issued for John L. Rowan, a 37-year-old male from Cleveland, Ohio. John Rowan is currently incarcerated at the Lake Erie Correctional Facility in County at Ohio on an unrelated offense and was scheduled to be released on October 15th of this year. Mr. Rowan will be released into our custody and brought back to Lorraine County, where he'll be arraigned for the murder of Mr. Litton. I will now turn it over to Lieutenant Greg Pitek, who led this investigation. Good afternoon. Um, this arrest was a culmination of a, a thorough investigation and, and the hard work of our detectives, um, Sergeant Adam Freeze, Detective Pat West, um, Detective Aaron Neff, and uh, Detective Randall Young, who's not with us uh, today, he's not here, but uh, also with the assistance of Chief Freeman and, and Captain Garrow. Um, we were assisted with, uh, by Agent uh, Chris Wilson and also Agent uh, Dan uh, Banner of the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigations um, with the crime scene. Uh, um, and also I wanna thank uh, the forensic scientists at the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigations um, specifically, uh, Emily Feldenkris, Sarah Horst, and uh, Rachel Keaton. And uh, we also uh, would like to thank the Cleveland Office of the FBI, specifically Agent um, Kelly Liberti and uh, Agent Lance Fragamelli, and also Trooper Mike Royko of the State Highway Patrol. To give you a brief synopsis of, of the case, um, Mr. Litton was reported missing back in April 18th of this year um, by his employee and family members after he failed to show up for work. Um, Mr. Litton's van was also missing from the residence and um, it was later recovered in the Tremont area of Cleveland. Uh, in May of this year, we conducted a prearranged search of Mr. Litton's property at 5490 Jaycox Road, where we discovered Mr. Litton's body in one of the outbuildings of the property. Um, it was determined by Lorain County Coroner that uh, Mr. Litton's cause of death was homicidal violence um, from blunt force, force trauma. During the course of our investigation, we learned that uh, Mr. Rowan was at the, at the residence the day that Mr. Litton was reported missing, or the day before he was reported missing. And from the physical evidence that was collected at the scene to include DNA, fingerprint evidence, um, cell phone evidence, um, this indicated Mr. Rowan's involvement in the homicide of Mr. Litton. We believe that Mr. Rowan acted alone and that robbery was the motive behind the murder. So we'll be taking any questions that you have at this time. Um, please keep in mind that I can't speak to the investigative te techniques that were used, um, statements made by the defendant, or any further into the motive. So if you have any questions at this time. Why was he incarcerated? We, 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 uh, we found out that uh, Mr. Rowan had turned himself in on an outstanding warrant um, the Thursday after the homicide. So the homicide occurred on Monday the 17th. Um, that following Thursday, he had turned himself in um, on a probation violation to the Lorain County Jail. What well, do you know what the original charge was? It was a probation violation. Okay. Um, I'm not really sure uh, exactly what the original charge was or, or why he was uh, violated on his probation. We, we did search, um, as a matter of fact, we, we were there a couple times. Um, the building in which he was discovered, um, it was a locked building. Um, we didn't have access at the time. So when we went back and had the prearranged search, when we brought out um, BCI to come out and um, process the, the residence, um, it was at that time was when we located um, Mr. Litton's body. I mean, just to say that Mr. Rowan went through great lengths 
to um, to cover up the homicide. So you're saying if he brought him there and then locked the building? I, I can't speak into too many uh, facts of of the actual um, the scene. Um, we believe that he was uh, murdered there at the residence. Um, again, it, and uh, Mr. Rowan went through great lengths to to um, prevent the discovery of, of Mr. Litton's body. Again, I can't get into details as to motive as, as much further than robbery. Um, um, like I said, we there were some items that were, were taken from the residence. Was there a struggle? We believe that uh, obviously there was blunt force trauma. Um, I can't say how much of a struggle there was, um, but we know that Mr. Litton was uh, struck with a blunt object. Uh, so as far as was there an actual fight, I, I can't tell you one way or another. What yeah, we we uh, we do have we do recover uh, a weapon that we believe was used. Um, again, it was it, um, I can't really speak and give specifics as to what it was, but it was something that was used to strike uh, Mr. Litton. Yeah, um, we found out in our investigation that uh, Mr. Rowan had actually done some work, um, some odd jobs for uh, Mr. Litton, um, specifically more uh, mechanical work. Uh, we believe that on the day that Mr. Litton was murdered, uh, Mr. Rowan was at the residence doing uh, mechanical work on a, on a vehicle at the house. Are drugs at all involved in this? As far as we know, no. Um, there's no indication any type of drugs involved. So he was like a mechanic and was doing some car repairs for him? Correct. We, we, did, we learned that Mr. Uh, Roan had been at the residence before, um, had done some work um, before for Mr. Litton. Does Mr. Rowan confess? Um, I can't speak uh, at any statements given by Mr. Rowan. I can't tell you we have interviewed him, um, but as far as any specifics to his statements, uh, I can't answer those questions right now. Has Mr. Rowan been known by North Ridgeville Police or any of the other agencies around? We don't have a prior history with Mr. Rowan here in North Ridgeville. Um, Mr. Mr. Rowan does have a, a criminal history, and you're more than welcome to check on on a, a public sites, but. Um, yeah, he, he was familiar with, with other agencies, not specifically to ours. Have you ever had any other problems with the, at Mr. Litton's house? Not, not to this nature, nothing to this nature, no. I'm sure. Um, you know, we've been in contact with the family. Um, I spoke to them um, when we uh, when we came to termination um, that arrests would be made. Um, you know, obviously, you know our our uh, our thoughts and prayers are with the family, um, and uh, you know we did speak to them. Um, they're you know they they were relieved that arrest was made. Um, and as they, you know, continue to, to deal with this matter, with the loss of, of their father and, and fan, you know, uh, Mr. Litton. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure in a community like North Ridgeville, um, you know, where this is not a common occurrence, um, it would be a relief um, to know that there's, we don't have someone out there um, committing murders all the time and that uh, this one was brought to a resolution. So. Not that we're aware. Um, again, I don't. Uh, you know, I can't speak to, you know, what uh, Mr. Rowan had said about the vehicle or anything like specific to that. Um, but as far as we know, I mean, there's no specific locate the re where it was located in Tremont. There's really no. Um, no connection. Though. No connection um, to either Mr. Rowan or Mr. Litton. 
I, I'm sorry, could you repeat? Well, why is Mr. Roller doing work for Mr. Wood? Like, how do they find each other? Uh, my understanding is that um, he has done work prior to this. Um, whether or not um, they got connection from an ad or, or through, you know, mutual friends or, or how, um, we don't know the exact connection as to how they ended up, you know, knowing each other or how Mr. Rowan ended up doing work for um, Mr. Litton, but we know that it's been some time they, that, that they've known each other. As far as as a motive, or yeah, we, motive. again, I can't I can't give too many details um, or go into further about the motive um, at this time. Are you looking at Mr. Rowan for anything else in in the area? Have there been any other crimes that that you can tie him to, or you're looking into? No, and there's no indication that Mr. Rowan was involved in anything else here in North Ridgeville. Um, we don't you know, have an unsolved homicide that we'd be looking at him for. But um, no, there's no indication that uh, Mr. Rowan was involved in any other activity here. What prompted the pre-arranged search? The, pre, the day we went back for the pre-arranged yeah, search? The pre search. Um, obviously, um, when Mr. Litton's van was found in Cleveland, you know, that, that broadened the, the crime scene. That broadened the area of, of search and um, specifically, you know, where we were going to look. And, and uh, so at that point, we determined we were going to start back at the beginning and then broaden our search again. Um, and so, uh, again, there was nothing readily apparent or evident that a crime had occurred at the house. Um, and that's why we, we got a hold of uh, Agent Wilson and, and BCI. Um, so that, you know, we could see, obviously, their skills, skill set's a lot better at finding out if a crime's covered up and, and looking for evidence. And so that's when we enlisted their help. Any idea why he turned himself in a couple days later? Um, again, I, I, I can't speak for Mr. Rowan as to why he did it. Um, we just thought it was very suspicious that uh, within a couple of days of, of a homicide occurring um, that he had, uh, you know, absconded from, from his uh, probation for months and then all of a sudden decided to turn himself in um, to us was kind of uh, uh, suspicious. But as far as why he did it, I can't say for sure. Initially, um, some of the evidence, we use cell phone um, evidence. And again, I can't speak specifically as techniques that were used, but we did use cell phone evidence um, that placed uh, Mr. Rowan um, in, in contact with, with Mr. Uh, Litton. Was 